What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV here, back here for another Tottenham update. Just a few things to get through today, and let's get into it. And let's start off with Eric Lamella, as he is up for the Puskas Award this year. Can we make it two Puskases in a row? As he's up for the Puskas for his absolutely amazing Rabona in the North London derby. Unfortunately, it meant nothing in the end of the day because we did end up losing the game. And he got sent off. And he... <laughs> <laughs> that was the most Eric Lamella game ever, and wasn't he came, it? he didn't start the game as well. Yeah, he came on as a sub, scored a Puskas award and then got sent off. So Eric Lamella. Lamella. <laughs> so Eric Lamella. Um, who he's up against. Uh, the other players that, you know, Riyad Mahrez is in there. I'm not sure which goal that's for. Yeah, goal for his country. Oh, it's for his country, is it? Um... Luis Diaz, Gortha Hein, Valentino Lazaro, Riyad Mahrez, Sandra, Awusu Anza. Uh, a lot of players I can't. Patrick Schick, I think that's for the halfway yeah, line goal in the Euros. Uh, Mehdi Taremi, Caroline Weir, Daniela Sanchez. Um, I'm not going to pretend to know all these goals, but Eric Lamella surely got to win it. Yeah, come on, Rabona. He's the only Rabona in there. You know, let's, we have to dominate this award. I want it every single year <laughs> winning the Puskas award. That's the most important thing. Um, but no, look. Two years <laughs> Puskas awards. You'll never <laughs> sing that. Um, look, it's a great goal. He's well deserved. I think it was a special goal. Um, so hopefully he uh, he wins it. We could win it again. But there's a lot of great goals in there, especially Patrick Schick in the Euros mm. as well to do on that stage is very very impressive. So not holding my breath, but I think he's definitely in the shout with like top three or something. Mm. I think he should win it. That's that's a goal like you're never going to see that a goal like that again. Like mm. through the legs, like like a a Rabona nutmeg. It was just insane that goal. It was an unbelievable. It was goal. An unbelievable was. goal. Uh, so I think it should win it. I really do. But in, let me know in the comment section below who you think is going to win the Puskas Award this year. Uh, but let's move on. Report from Ali Gold uh, talking about Joe Roden. And he says, Joe Roden is understood to be open to a loan move in January in order to get more game time. But it could depend on whether Spurs buy a new centre-back, especially if Romero's injury is serious. Well, I'm worrying. He says whether Tottenham buy a new centre-back because surely we have to sign a new. Well, then again, it's Tottenham here. Exactly, about, so you know, you can never, never give know. definites with Spurs, can yeah, you? It's true. Um, so, look, I think for Joe Roden at the moment, he's not getting a lot of game time here, is he? Let's be honest. Even with injuries, he seems to be last in the pecking order at the moment. So, if we do buy um, a centre back or two and Ro Romero isn't too serious, then I'm, I'm not against it. I guess it could be good for him, especially if it's in a Premier League team to get some Premier League experience. Because we don't really know. Yes, we've played some games, he looked okay, but and he's looked okay in international level. But you know, we've never seen him getting a proper run in a in a Premier League team. So I'd like to see how he fares if he does do that. Uh, I wouldn't want him to go to the Championship. We have to be a Premier League team. Yeah, for me, if we are planning to keep him, then he has to go to a Premier League club on loan. He has to nowhere around Europe and not not in the Championship. We have to see him consistently in the Premier League to make up our minds on him and that's yeah. just the case of the matter isn't it exactly i think he's got good attributes but at the moment just they don't people don't fancy him do they so um there has to be a reason for that he uh, w and i think there's a few things he needs to improve on so um if obviously if i'm not against him having a run in the team if we don't sign a center back but if we do end up signing a couple which i hope we do in january yeah i think a low move makes sense mm. All right, let's move on. And this is from The Telegraph out in Holland. And they're saying that Ajax will attempt to sign Steven Bergwijn on loan this January if David Neres departs the Eredivisie club. First of all, are you open to seeing uh, Bergwijn leave on loan to Ajax? And second of all, would you take David Neres as, as a uh, replacement? Um, I like Neres. I think he's a good player. So I, 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 I remember in the Champions League one, he was brilliant. So um, I wouldn't be that against it. Bergwijn on loan does make sense to me because we're so short of attacking options right now. Like, unless we're going to bring like bring in two to replace him, like it doesn't make sense to, to to let him go on loan. Either we get our money back for him, and then and then okay, you can say okay, didn't work out. You move forward and look to replace him. That's fine. Uh, you could do that if Conte doesn't fancy him. But to send him out on loan doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, what when we have so few attacking options to have one of our best ones out on loan? What why why would you do that? It could be like a loan with an option to buy. And like I said, like if we were to do like a replacement. For David Neres, would that's you take, different, but that's not the question. You, There's not we're not being linked to Neres, are we? No, we're not. But they are saying he could leave. Um, and why can't we be an option if he was to leave? I know there isn't links for right now, but I'm just saying for argument's sake. If you're telling me, would I swap Bergvine for Neres? Yeah, why not? But but that's not like. But would I loan Bergvine out right now without anyone coming in? No. 
Yeah, that's obvious. Yeah. The world would, yeah, that makes no sense. Mm-hmm. Like, that, why would we do that? Yeah. All right, let's move on. Demarzio has been talking over the last couple of days, and the first one from him is saying Brozovic and Stefan de Vrij are unlikely for Tottenham as they look to target more top young players for their project, and uh, these two players are deemed too old for us, apparently. Well, yeah, I think they're both in their late 20s. I believe Brozovic is 29, and so is de Vrij. So um, I can understand that. I, I, I would have thought that Conte wouldn't be, I guess he probably wouldn't be too bothered about their age because he you know the way he likes to build his teams I don't think he's bothered about players for the future but obviously Tottenham the way we're building especially since Paratigi's coming definitely we, we've looked at a younger kind of player haven't we mm-hmm. and we do want to kind of uh we, we have already loved the average age of the squad but we don't I guess we don't want to uh, we do need some more experience but we don't want to um start adding players who we're going to have to replace in a year's time or so, do we? So, I mean, De Vrij, I think, can play for a few more years, but maybe Brozovic is a player who I think, given his age, I, I, I don't think I'd look to bring him in. Yeah, to be honest, um, yeah, I mean, in terms of the central midfield options, I, I get that completely. But as a centre-back, I think that um, this club might need a, a more experienced head, uh, you know, in that back three. Uh, so... I could see it for the central midfielders, but for the centre back, I wouldn't mind bringing in someone that's 27, 28, 29 at all. No, not at all. Yeah, so I think Devry would be. I think also centre backs last a bit longer as well. You know, you still got uh, players. You know, look at Bonucci and Chiellini. You know, in their mid mid to late thirties. Thiago Silva. Thiago Silva, thirty seven. You know, still playing brilliantly. So. Um, I wouldn't be too worried about age kind of thing when it comes to centre backs for me. Mm-hmm. I'll definitely, if De Vrij is available, I think I would seriously consider that. I wouldn't think of age as an option. But mm-hmm. centre mid, yeah, I think it does. Take, you take, have to take that more into consideration. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the next one from Dimazio is Frank Kessie could be an option for Tottenham. However, not in January. Why, if he's an option, why is he not an option in January? That doesn't make any sense to me. He's on a free in the summer, so you could get him at a very reduced rate this January. And if we're going to wait to the summer, you know, we're going to have to fight off so many clubs, spend a bit of money, 10 million, and get him in, get him through the door. Maybe he's just, maybe he's saying um, that Kessie isn't willing to agree a deal in January. I don't know. That's all I can think of. Uh, because why wouldn't he be an option in January if he's going to be on a free, if he's decided he's not going to sign AC Milan? Didn't we do that with Lewis Holtby? Um, we were going to get a couple of players, yeah. And, and we paid a bit more just to get him early. Mm-hmm. Let's do that with Kessie, man. Gilberto, we did it as well. <laughs> All the great players. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, it really worked out well, hasn't it? Uh, whenever we've done that. But um, look, I think um, may- maybe it's, it's, it's not. It's not a sense of his not an option for Tottenham. It's maybe Kessie isn't willing to decide his future in January. Maybe that's what you're saying. Mm, maybe. All right, let's move over to the Gazetta, Italian Gazetta. They're saying Fabio Paratici is under investigation for false accounting, along with his former colleagues at Juventus, Andrea Agnelli and uh, Pavlo, Pavel Nedved. I mean... I read Naps Lawyers available. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> get, get him in. We cannot afford to lose Paratici just as soon as we got him. Classic Spurs. Uh, we get a, finally get a director of football and then he goes to prison. Like, now it makes sense why he wanted to leave you. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's in a rush. I've got to get out of here, mate. I'll take uh, really hope that nothing comes of it because I think if he, well, if he has to leave, Conte will probably have to leave as well. And uh, that the domino effect will definitely go and be uh, falling. I think so. Um, classic Tottenham. He's now under investigation. Hopefully, it's nothing. Uh, there's nothing to it. I don't really know anything about the case or anything. It's something about false accounting. I don't know. Um, but it's funny if Juventus uh, go down for this again. I'm more more craziness in the Juventus hierarchy. Yeah, not the first time, would it? But it, but that was a match fixing, wasn't it? Yeah. Before? Um, I'm just praying that it's nothing to that Paratici is like completely innocent. Knowing Spurs, yeah, there's definitely classic. something to this. Definitely. Well, if we, if we know anything, uh, maybe we can get a director of football goes to prison bounce. You never know. <laughs> you we never know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and let's move on. Oh, well, actually, just before we move on, um, just a, a funny quote, or not a funny quote, but an interesting quote from Antonio Conte that I wanted to bring up. And he was talking about his relationship with Fabio Paratici. And he says, me and Fabio, we speak the same language and I'm not talking about Italian. And I love that quote. Absolutely yeah. loved it. I hope that doesn't mean contacts a lawyer up as well. But, uh, honestly, <laughs> no, I'm joking. But, uh, yeah, I do love that. It shows they're on the same wavelength, and they do, and they definitely. Oh, look, they've been good friends for many, many years, and I think Paratici is one of the main reasons Conte is here at the moment. So, 
that goes to show it. Yeah. And the last bit of news for you guys as the home shirt from 2223 has been leaked on footy headlines. And when it is leaked on there, it usually is the right kit. So this is the kit where apparently we will be playing in next year. And I kind of like it. I kind of like it with the yellow trim and the blue the trim. One. It's not even just not even halfway through the season yet. What are you looking the only at difference between kit? this is the, is the trim on the shirt. That's the only difference on the new kit. This is like when they start playing Christmas songs in August. This is what <laughs> it's like, basically. This is what I feel. Um, like, well, literally, the, the, the season we're currently in isn't even halfway through. We're already looking at next year's home shirt, like, leaking. Like, whatever. Everyone should take a, a leaf out of Brentford's exactly. book. Because Brentford have uh, confirmed that next year their shirt is going to be the exact same shirt as this season. Um, they want to everyone... create a more sustainable shirt culture, which is yeah. currently very that, unsustainable. That, that's 100% right. I remember when I was growing up, you know, shirts two, three years, um, you know were, were the same kits for the two three seasons and, and we should go back to that all this is is a money making ploy from the football clubs that's all it yeah, is it's a cash cow every year it's like every year new FIFA comes out every year a new shirt comes out it's just a way of making money uh, from milking more f uh, money out of the fans every single year um, you know, I don't, we don't need a new shirt every single year. There's no need for it. Just to make more money, and they're getting more and more expensive as well. They, you know, then you've got the what you got two different versions, don't you? Now yeah, you got the, the shirt that the players wear, shirt, and then and like then... the one for your average person. Exactly, it's that ridiculous. <laughs> and the other one's like double the price. It's like you don't even get a pre, you don't even get the real shirt anymore. It's like what are you paying for? I, just so it looks like it. Um, I don't know. I'd, I'd have, I haven't bought a shirt from the club in a long time. I'd, I'd, I'm not interested in this buying a shirt every year kind of thing. It, it just it's too much for me. Mm, I completely agree. I completely agree. But that is our Tottenham update today. Let me know in the comment section below if you have any thoughts regarding any of the news stories we've brought to you today. Like, subscribe, and comment. And as always, come, come on, on you Spurs. Spurs.